so alluring. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome to a very special edition of the Rovers Academy podcast. You can see I've got a special guest with me today. Um, unfortunately, no Dan and no Peter. I've been repl replaced them with Stuart Jones here, who is head of academy at Blackburn Rovers. Um, I'm sure most of you will be aware of that already, but we'll delve into Stuart's past. We've just said that he's part of the furniture now at the club because you've been with the club 10 years, is it now, Stuart? Yeah, that's right. Coming up to 10 years, so um, so been a while. And uh, how are you doing anyway? So how's the kind of the festive period looking for, for yourself and for the academy? Yeah, I think obviously for the academy and the schoolboy programmes um, just finished. Um, so that'll shut down for a period of time um, to return. The 16s will return. We commence on the 3rd. And the remainder of the schoolboy programme commence on the 11th of January. So it's a bit of a break for the players and families there. So I think that's really important. And then 18s um, play tomorrow behind closed doors. And game finished tomorrow. And then we're in a couple of days, I think 28th, 29th. Um, to then return full full training from the 3rd of January. Um, and then the 23s will sort of mirror the first team needs, really, in terms of the, the busy festive period that they'll have. So, um, so it'll be pretty busy, I think, for 23s. And they just finished the domestic programme for the year, didn't they, yesterday against Derby? So yeah, I've... finished on a high. Yeah, absolutely. Finished on a high, which has a, which is a, been a real positive, really, in terms of how the 23s have done. Um, at times varied. We obviously we were strong last night with some thirteen players dropping down, but similar to Derby really. And um, but I think uh, since since the season began for the twenty threes, you know, it's been a mixture of young, um, more senior pros, and then obviously some thirteen. But I've done really well. Yeah, we do have a question on that later, and which we'll have in the Q and A part of the interview. But just touching on the twenty threes, there you say they're doing really well. They're up right at the top of that Premier League two. Uh, division how do you feel that that's going to pan out for the rest of the season is it important for you that they are challenging at the top there is it still you know something uh, no I mean uh, yeah yeah I, I think for us at 18s and 23s level really what, what's important to us is, is the development of the players and um, we we always say we want them to be competitive we want them to have winning mentalities but ultimately you know, that the culture and the mindset of the staff is around developing young players and providing opportunities. I think it's really important. And what we may find after the, after the Christmas period is that obviously some of the more, I guess, senior 23s may go out on loan. Um, but it's also important to push some of the 18s into that environment and give them opportunities um, and, and sort of allow us to, to assess them a little bit at the next level. Um, I think that's really important. So... So for us, listen, it's great winning games. It's it's great for the players. It's we want them to have winning mentalities, but ultimately we have a. It has to be a, a development culture. It has to be a development mindset within the staff, and it has to. We have to make sure that that we have a pathway you know, full of opportunities for young players to progress into the first team. That, that's ultimately what what we're about. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll talk about the philosophy and stuff behind that later on. But first of all, I just want to delve into yourself, if that's not too uh, personal. Okay. Um, you said you've been, we've been, you've been at the club now for about a decade. Um, but before that, were you involved in football? Are you a kind of were you were you a professional, semi-pro? Let people into kind of how you got involved in football. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a long time ago, but uh, I actually came through the youth system at Liverpool. Um, I was at Liverpool from 11 through to 18. So when you're from Merseyside, you're from Merseyside. Yeah, yeah. So I'm based, obviously, um, north end of Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, I grew up an Everton fan, but I actually signed for Liverpool at, at sort of 11 and came through their system, which, which I think has, has had a, a real impact on, on, on my time, even at Blackburn and, and, and the job I've been now. Some, some of the things that I've learned during that period of, of being a young player coming through the system. Um, at 18, I was given the, the, the dreaded news um, that I wasn't to be offered a pro contract um, at that time. And I sort of went to, I remember Preston at the time, I went to Notch Forest and um, just trying to trying to get a contract like a lot of young players do. Um, nothing happened. And I ended up playing then about seven years semi-pro. Um, 
around different leagues as um, before I finished around 27, 28 years of age. Um, but during that period of playing semi-pro, sort of went back into into education and and developed that side really. Um, as 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 wondering then what type of career I would go into and. And after that, um, around 27, I, I got offered um, a position in, in, in a college um, on um, teaching um, on a BTEC online type of sports courses, as well as managing the football programme. Um, and I spent probably nine or 10 years um, in that environment, doing some coaching and running the football programme, as well as delivering the, the academics for to young students, so um, a lot of life experiences um, that I've learned through that, and I, and I think having that um, coming through a system as, as as a young footballer and the dreams of you know becoming a first team player, I think all them experiences as well as the academic experience after that has, has stood me in real good stead of really the last ten years at Rovers. So um, on the back of that, I then joined Rovers as head of education and, and I guess player care it's called now but, but quickly evolved out of that role with the introduction of the E triple P. Um I think sort of my skill set and my background um, was aligned to that and I was heavily involved in supporting the then academy manager um to to help the academy go through the, the first cycle of, of E triple P really. Um, and then on the back of that I moved into football operations at the academy. Um, in terms of in terms of that role, I think, you know, if I'm honest, the the academy manager role around that time started to change. Um, I think previous to that, academy managers were very much out on the grass, coaching, you know. But I think the change in the introduction of the E Triple P, the role of the academy manager changed. It became more, I, I guess, of a, a leadership and management around uh, the number of staff in terms of um, it became more of, I guess, a business type specific role, um, and and it's evolved ever since. I speak to academy managers now, and they they often talk about the chances to get to get out in the grass and and just be around the players is is difficult and challenging, um, but but we have to do that. And um, so I think as part of that football operations, it was at the time Eric was was very much the out on the grass and more of the head of coaching type role and I would do the, the sort of the academy manager responsibilities alongside Eric. Um, I did have a stint before Eric came in as academy manager um, because the previous one had moved on and I spent about five months as academy manager. And then obviously Eric moved on and, and I was given the opportunity to, to come into the, the post really. Um, you know, so it's been a bit of a journey, different roles and you know, I've, I've I've certainly taken a lot from from my career so far that I'm implementing now, and even over the last three or four years, how my roles evolved and other academy managers, how it's evolved during the the triple P process is it's been quite frightening. Really. So you've mentioned the E triple P a few times. A lot of people, especially if they're living abroad, may not know what that means. Do you want to just expand a little bit on what E triple P is when it came in and what it's meant for for yours as an academy? Yeah, so the Triple P, the Elite Player Performance Plan, was was introduced really 2010 um, by the Premier League, and the, the the key aim of it was really there was a concern about not enough homegrown talent was being produced, um, and and this E Triple P model was was brought in really to try and um, develop more homegrown talent, basically, um, and what it meant was that clubs could then apply for different categorisations. So there's category one, two, three, and four. Um, now, there's different sets of criteria for each category. Um, I think, you know, from our perspective as a football club, the owners um, and, and the board throughout them years have been fantastic and really supportive in wanting us as a football club to be a Category 1 academy. Um, and what, the, what that involves is that there's a minimum investment. So the minimum investment for a Category 1 programme is £3 million a year. Um, the certain staffing structure that you have to have in place across the different disciplines within the academy, sports science, education, recruitment, coaching, um, certain facilities. You know, you've know, got to have an indoor um, 4G, an outdoor 4G. You've got to have a set amount of classrooms, changing rooms. So there's a host of criteria that you have to, you have to meet to, to, re to firstly get Category 1 and then to retain it through the different cycles. Um, 
And as I say, as a football club, the owners have been terrific in supporting that. And and we retained it back in 2010. I think since then, we've probably gone through three more cycles of it, two or three more cycles. And um, we've, we've retained that status, which is which is fantastic for us. I think it's really important for us the, in terms of um, what that brings and the benefits it brings, really. So what are those? Why, why do we go through this expenditure and having to have all these facilities? What what benefits does it actually bring us being Category 1? Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it, it's massively important. As, as everyone knows, we're... Where we're, where we're located, um, it's a real competitive, the North West area in terms of the, the Premier League clubs on the doorstep. And, um, you know, for us to be Category 1 allows us, so we play in the Category 1 games programme. Um, so obviously opposition, you know, United, Liverpool, City, Everton. Um, that's fantastic. It, it, it's a real challenge for our players, but it, it allows us to, to pit ourselves against some of the best talent that have been either brought through them clubs or brought from overseas. Um, I think it's really important. I think it has a massive impact on recruitment. Um, we, in the past, have been successful, I guess, in terms of being able to, you know, some of them clubs will release players that, that we've been able to, to bring in. Dan Butterworth, Rankin Costello being, being two that probably stand out right away, really, and come over from Manchester United. So... It allows us to be competitive from a recruitment perspective. I think, I think it has changed now. Uh, we're young players and parents who have a big influence on it that they want to see a pathway, but they also want to be in a Category 1 academy because they know the benefits in terms of the, the development the programme they get, the games programme, the, the, the facilities, the staff and support that they get. That's a big pull. Um, I think if you have that alongside a pathway, I think that's where where we can be really competitive um, in terms of in terms of getting players from from other clubs, uh, which we have recently. We've just um, managed to get an agreement with Adam Cadiff, who's come out of Liverpool. Um, he's an under sixteen, but will come in as a scholar. So I know that there was two other clubs, one of them a Premier League club, um, who who were also interested and wanted to sign him. And then he's offered to join us at Blackburn Rovers, which is fantastic for, for a lot of the things I've just spoke about, really. Yeah, absolutely. I did a study only a couple of months ago about 23-year-old players and how they are valued now and where they've come from. So two-thirds of the players have come from a Category 1 academy. The rest, obviously, from Category 2, 3 and non-league and all that sort of stuff. So it, is, yeah. it seems to be increasingly important that players have that kind of background and what the academies can teach them as well as football, that being a well-rounded individual, probably does help towards them being able to mature in the professional game as well. Have you found that to be something that's changed over the last 10 years? Yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, I would like to add to that. I know we talk about players coming out of, of other clubs, which which will always happen every year about us trying to, trying to be competitive, but Listen, we work really hard to bring our own players who have been in our system a long time. That's 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 ultimately our, our priority to get as many of them to to that scholarship level where they come in full time. We want as many of them coming in at under nine, coming right through the system. Um, you know, so that's really important to us. And then so it's that lends to your adding, Sorry, go on. And then it's then adding them a couple of maybe really good players who are coming out of. Everton, Liverpool, you know, your Premier League clubs that will add to the group, but ultimately the, the real focus for us as well as that is to make sure that we do everything we can to, to transition our own through the system, which is really important. So that brings me back to the, the philosophy question. Do Rovers, do you have like a philosophy that comes down from you or is it something that's agreed with the upper management? What, what kind of philosophy do we have at Rovers Academy? Yeah, I think, I think it's what's really important is that... Um, you know, we have a philosophy that that is drawn down. We want our teams to play similar styles, pl play a similar way to the first team. I think it's really important. And, you know, you watch our first team play very, very technical, want to play out, play on the front foot, try and win the ball high up um, to counter, you know, it. that's sort of the, the philosophy that the gaffer's sort of driving at the top. And, and we're, it's very important for us that, that we do the same through the system, really, because ultimately we're trying to produce players to go and play in our first team. And so we ha they have to be 
you know, comfortable going into that environment and understanding of the demands and the principles and the philosophy of first team level. If they've had that coming through our system, I do think it makes that transition a lot more comfortable for young players. So I think it's really important. So a lot of the work that the first team do and, and how they play and, and, and the style and formations, we, we, we will try and mirror. And we do mirror through the, through the age group because I think it's, it, it, it's really important um, that we do that. Yeah. So there's a joint up approach basically f- across all of the players that are connected to Blackburn Rovers. Let's delve into the technicalities of, of things. A lot of people may not be aware of stuff. I'm Blackburn Rovers. I was born in Blackburn, so I know um, where everything happens and how it happens. But um, a lot of people listening to this won't. So what teams do we do we have? Like how low does it go? And um, where do we base? How many players do we have? How many staff? What are the kind of technicalities around running the academy there? Yeah, so um, we have, they, they call them phases. So we have a pre-academy, which is really under six, under seven and under eight. Um, so the pre-academy is very much around young players um, and they're not specifically attached to Blackburn Rovers. So the pre-academy players can come to Blackburn one night, can go to Manchester United one night. It's only at under nine when they officially sign that they then become Blackburn Rovers registered players. So we have the pre-academy, six, sevens and eights. Then we have what we call the foundation phase, which is under nine to under 12. Then we have the youth development phase, which is under 13 to under 16. Then it's what we call a professional development phase, which is obviously the under 18s and under 23s. We were all full-time players and it's it's the job and they're employed by the football club, really. Um, you know, so that's how it's based on a, on a phase specific. Now, if you look at the numbers of players across that, you're looking around 200 players um, across all the age groups. So, you know, it's a huge operation. It's a, it's a, it's a huge programme um, that, that we that we have in place. Um, you know, and it's brilliant to see how them young players, John Buckley, remember, under six, under seven, coming right through the system and, and then you see him in the first team. It's, it's, it's fantastic to see. Um, so, there's, so there's a lot of players and... The journey is a long journey for them players through the system. Um, it is up and down. Um, you know, development is up and down. A lot of things will impact on that. Um, you know, not all of them come in at six and go right through, as we know. Um, we, we do have decisions to make along the way. You know, so some players might be with us two, three years. Some might come right through. Some might join later on in the system. Some might join, you know, in the YDP later on. So it, it, it's different journeys for different players and they will come in to the system at different times and go out of the system at different times, which which is always difficult, um, especially when you bring players in at such a young age and to have to sit them down and, and make them decisions is very difficult. But but what I do say is along that journey for our young players is that that we're always honest. We always, we're always honest with parents and players. We, we always make the environment enjoyable. And I always say to we had them players after leave us having a, had a fantastic experience and um, learnt a lot, you know, not just as, as players, but become better people and individuals. Um, and that's what we strive towards. And that's the difficulty of the job, I think, in terms of when, when you have to make them decisions, it's, it's really tough. Um, you know, but I always think if you do it in the right way, you create the right environment and you allow them players to have a fantastic experience, then, and hopefully, um, you know, when they do leave, then they talk about Blackburn Rovers Football Club as a fantastic academy. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if that's your education side coming out there as well. In the, I used to teach as well. I was a teacher for four years in, a, in secondary schools. And I think you do look at young people as whole individuals, not just footballers, not just, you know, they're in your classroom or whatever. You want to develop them as, as human beings, really, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, to be honest, Andy, that's, that's a big part of our programme. Um, we do a lot of sort of informal education um, with the scholars, with the schoolboys around different life skills aspects, because I think it, it's so important that they spend so much time with us. Um, you know, some of these boys are coming in three or four times a week. Um, some of them, when we have our day release programme, because we have a, a, a different programme for the different age groups and training program that they probably spend more time with us than they they actually do with maybe their own peers 
So I think it's, it's, it's massively important. We have a responsibility. I always say we have a re responsibility to, to develop these as young people um, as well as players. I think it's really important. You know, and, and ultimately for them ones that are going to go be successful and get careers, you know, you have to conduct yourself in the right way as, as when you're in the spotlight and when you represent our football club, it's really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, does the manager take a lot of interest in the academy, our current manager, Tony Mowbray? Yeah, um, to be fair to the gaffer, he, he's been fantastic for the academy. Um, not just the gaffer, I think, you know, Mark Venus, who, who works alongside him and, and, and the coaching staff, Damien, you know, Lowy, I think, always really supportive, doors always open for conversations. Um, you know, I think I, I can't speak highly enough and I've been at the football club a long time, um, 10 years and as we know, there's been different different managers along the way, but I can't speak highly enough of, of the gaffer in terms of, and his staff, how supportive of the academy they really are, which I think is is massively important, you know, because it, we can only get the players to, to the front door and, you know, it's up to the first team staff, not just here, but any club, um, you know, of, of, of give, wanting to give young players opportunities. And I really think that the gaffer um, wants to do that. He wants to give young players opportunities, which yeah. which is brilliant for any academy system um, to have that. So so he's been fantastic. Yeah, we have a an outstanding record. I can't remember how many game weeks it is now where we've always had an academy prospect a player on the first team or on in the squad. So the longer we can keep that going, the better. And it certainly doesn't show any signs yeah. of slowing down. Dan Butterworth getting back on the bench, um, and Brad Lyons on the bench as well recently. Obviously, yeah. um, a late addition to the academy program but still um playing for the under 23 isn't in the great vein of form at the moment so obviously getting that promotion is is very important for the current under 23s to be able to see if i play well here then i'll get a chance yeah yeah obviously it's 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 shown that you know you look at match day squads and even minutes and the number of players that are, that have come through i think for us, this, and I also believe that part of some of their journeys might be the fact that they have to go out on loan. Would be, you know, Scotty Wharton, for example, won three promotions out on loan, probably had a host of games, and he's come back this season. Ultimately, you know, his injury is devastating for him, and you know, but before that, looked as though that pathway that he took in the loan system really gave him the foundations to to then come back. And I thought this season really came in and looked. Looked really well composed, looked as though he'd grown, become a man, as the gaffer always speaks about, and, and was looking comfortable in the side. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's great. The young lads do understand that potentially that might be the pathway alone for experience, or if they're fortunate enough to get an opportunity and they go in and do well, there's, there's both sides, really. Um, and again, the gaffer and the, the first team staff are really supportive of that and, 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 and try and do what's best for, for the player in terms of their development and their, their pathway into our first team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've just got a couple of questions to finish this section of the of the interview, really. Um, like, So you've mentioned already a couple of things that give you satisfaction and, and that are challenges. What would you say is, is the thing that gives you the most satisfaction from the role that you've got at the moment? Yeah, I think I think the big one, and, and Probably people will say players making debuts and getting in the first team. I think, yeah, without doubt, that, that's a, a huge achievement and it's great satisfaction. But I also think seeing the players develop, I mentioned before, um, you know, coming through the system, but but developing as people. Um, as, you know, you, they may come in and four or five years later as, as character and personality um, that changed and you can, you can just see how they've developed as young people. I think that that's, you know, great satisfaction. Players who we, we may have, you know, said a no to and, and, and they're not for Blackburn Rovers, but then have gone on and been successful. You know, we and we may have paid, although we've had to make that decision, maybe the time they spent with us has allowed us to, to have a little bit of, I guess, an influence on that. We've had boys who have been released as, as scholars are 18 and gone over to America to universities and been really successful. So it doesn't necessarily just mean that the players who go and play in our first team, I think it's, it's young players who come through the system, develop as people and are successful in, in whatever route that takes, whether it be going and playing four year scholarship, going and playing lower league, going, I think that's the satisfaction. The ultimate satisfaction is obviously players and you see your, your bookos and, 
them type of players making debuts is brilliant. But I think as staff, we look at all them success stories, really. Yeah, there's lo loads of ex Rovers alumni across the, the the pyramid, really, isn't there? Even up at the even in the Premier League, Jack O'Connell and the like, yeah, who, who got up there and, and done really well. Unfortunately, obviously, he's had a long term injury as well. But it is great when you, I mean, you always think, oh, why couldn't he have done that at Blackburn? But just to see someone come through our system and be successful is a real vindication of the program. So I agree with that. Yeah. Um, you said about challenging aspects do you think that it is like giving people the bad news that is the worst part of it um yeah i mean listen no one likes but but we always do it what's right by the player and we always explain to the parents i always say to staff if you're honest along the way and along the pathway in terms of where they're at with development it shouldn't really come as a surprise um as such as as difficult as it is and and they always are really difficult and it, it is challenging for all staff. Some of these boys may have been with us, you know, eight, nine years right through the system and that final hurdle. So that, that can be really challenging. I think the demands of the the category one and the demands of the day to day and the number of staff, you know, can be challenging um, in terms of ensuring that we have to make sure, and I say this to staff, but we want to be the best we can be. We want to create the best environment we can possibly be. Um, you know, and that's a challenge, Andy. That's a challenge every day to make sure that we're, we're bang on it and we're being able to compete with 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 clubs, Premier League clubs, um, who are on our doorstep. Um, challenge around keeping our best players who come through the system at different age groups. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, and that comes down to your environment and, and how you work with players, how you treat players, how you treat families. You know, families are so important to us in terms of the commitment that they make. So for me, it, you know, it, they're all the challenges that, that come with the job. And I would say, you know, a lot of them have been successful at, and, and long may that continue. But, um, you know, I think, I think we've done really well over the years in terms of um, producing. I think that the, the big one for us is that we have to continue to do that. We have yeah. to continue to, to produce players. And, Listen, I'm Premier League players, ultimately. I uh, was speaking not long ago, but about producing Premier League players where, you know, technically outstanding and speak and manoeuvre past people like let us in big parts of the game. Our programme is very much, you know, adhering towards that. Tony Cars has done a lot of work around the programme, you know, now being more technical based to to make sure we produce that that calibre calibre of player, hopefully to to play in our first team in the Premier League, ultimately that's what about. Or, you know, if if it's not and someone comes along and financially offers a lot of money for these players, then then even that will but, but to play in our first team in the Premier League is, is the aim. Yeah, absolutely. I think people understand that obviously there's a financial commitment to this as we were speaking about earlier. And if you can pay for that by developing players that then bring in money through transfer fees or or whatever, then that is also a function of what we do. Um, just to kind of finish off this part of the, the chat that we're going to have, uh, we're going to launch into a Q&A later, which will be broadcast at a different time. Um, I just wanted to ask about any players or, you know, any teams down in the lower age groups that you think Rovers fans should be keeping an eye on or watching out for in the years to come. Yeah, listen, I, to a point, it'd probably be, I, I guess, wrong to identify individuals. What I would say is that, you know, we, we're excited about some talented players right through the system from I call them the babies and I put the our babies in the system to a point, you know, through that, that we are excited about. Um, you know, I, I think I think the other thing that we may be excited about, the pathway, the development pathway, you know, some might come later than others. There's growth, there's growth issue, issues, maturation as they come through. So they all, they'll all come at different times and you know, one minute one player might be middle of the group by the time the end of YDP, the top end of the group because of the, of the development that does have to go through. But but I feel as though we've got some exciting talent, um, you know, top end of YDP as well. And and even the scholars, um, you know, we've got some recognised international boys within there and then 23s, you know, already we talk about some who broke into the first team, but even, you know, Sam Barnes is, is developing, Jack Vales, who you know, when he comes back from injury. I think Brennan's exciting. I think there's a lot, you know, and Dan then the Pike, youth team. Yeah, youth team, Dan Pike. Dan Pike. Yeah. 
you know, it's just an important, really, you know, couple of years in terms of their development now. But but I'm excited about some of the, the talent within within the system. I think the aim and the challenge now is to continue to to, to improve them, and get them better, and get them better, and and hopefully, I'm sure they'll they'll get opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And clearly we're doing a good job of it at the moment. As we said, the talent pipelines have been uh, coming through really well into the first team. Uh, we're going to leave it there in terms of the interview, Stuart. We're going to um, finish the recording there. Thank you for, for giving us an insight of, into your role. Uh, we're going to come back with some Q&As later on and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what the, the fans have been asking you to answer as well. But for now, thank you, Stuart, and I uh, hope people have enjoyed that time. Cheers, Andy, and thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases, and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods, including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. So alluring.